uh, you know, reports, speculation, not things we really get into. Um, look, I, I understand the question, uh, but as I've said in the past, any conversations that we have or don't have with other clubs um, are going to be internal. Um, I've, you know, I've been pretty steadfast about that. Um, you know, with our players, with 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 uh, other clubs, and, and that, that'll 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 remain the case. I'm very confident in Tua. He's done a lot of good things uh, this spring, this off season, this training camp. Uh, played well last week. Um, and again, my conversations with the players, you know, are going to always remain between uh, me and that player. So uh, I talk to a lot of players every day. Um, Obviously, I spent a lot of time with the quarterbacks. Um, but, yeah, those conversations will remain between myself and, and that player. Uh, speaking of dysfunctional organizations, uh, Deshaun Watson remains a member of the Houston Texans. And I remain baffled as to why that is. Um, oh, teach it. All the preaching Nick, continues. Keep Nick, going. Nick, Nick, Nick Casario is blowing this again. He's blowing it again. It's the second time. This is strike two. If he, yeah. if Nick Casario, yeah. yeah, if Cal McNair, if Jack Easterby, whoever's running the show, the quote unquote brain trust in Houston, if they don't deal to Sean Watson before the season, that's strike two. They would have blown it twice because let's not forget, right? They probably could have had a bunch of picks before the draft before yeah. all hell broke loose with the 22 civil and 10 criminal allegations. If they wouldn't have been so stubborn and trying to get him to change his mind, which again, in, in, in fairness, in the name of consistency, I understand why you make the initial attempt. And as a matter of fact, I said, hey, I wouldn't be rushing to trade the dude. I'd be trying to figure out if I, could, I get it. These types of quarterbacks don't grow on trees. I'd be trying to figure out how to smooth it out. So I said that. But at a certain point, it ain't happening. And he made that clear. They didn't trade him for the picks in the 2021 draft. Now they're sitting here holding out for three ones, two twos, whatever it is they're holding out for. When the truth of the matter is, Michael, Deshaun Watson is not this asset that they can afford to try to hold out for the best deal possible. Houston needs to make Deshaun Watson somebody else's problem. Okay, mm. he's not playing for them. It must be real nice to even be able to consider paying somebody ten and a half million dollars to sit. Who are you really punishing? Like if you're the Houston Texans, you should be more desperate than the Dolphins right now to make this trade. And you should be trying to get two ones or a one and a conditional two that could become a one, whatever Thank it you. is to get this headache Thank that you. is Deshaun Watson out of your organization. Because for the same reason that, you know, the Dolphins probably aren't falling over themselves to give up the farm to get Deshaun Watson, which is the uncertainty around those aforementioned 22 civil and 10 criminal complaints and the possibility that the league could put him on paid leave once he actually starts getting paid, which is the regular season. For that same reason, you cannot assume that after the season, oh, we'll get more or, we'll, or the same offer will be there. I'll be damned. How do you know that? How do you know that? And in the meantime, you're going to have this Deshaun situation hanging over your organization all season. This, this weeks of inmates running the asylum mentality or inmates running the prison mentality, rest in peace, Bob McNair. But this what this reeks of like, we're not going to let the player who has a no trade it. clause, right? Right. Dictate. Right. We're not, not going to let him yeah. dictate where we send him. We're not going to be forced into anything. Well, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face. Oh, I agree with you. I agree with you. You're so right, Mike. I was trying to think of this weekend. Who does Nick Casario remind me of like, and it's not necessarily a specific person. It's it's a specific title. And of course, uh, because we're brother from another and we're Michael and Michael. Uh, of course, my reference is training day. Is anybody surprised? <laughs> so remember the scene in training day where Alonzo has a restaurant menu, pretends like it's a search warrant, 
and he and Jake, right? <laughs> uh, he, he, he and Jake, you know, go to the crib and he's like, what's this boy's name? Who's he looking for? Anyway, you know, you know all the names. So anyway, he's looking for somebody. Oh, and, oh yeah, he's looking for the Sandman, uh, but he goes to he goes to Macy Gray's Sandman, house, right? Looking for the so, Sandman, right? Right. Yeah, he really looking, looking for, for the Sandman. Speak on it, son. Right. right. <laughs> Drugs, cash. Speak on it, son. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Come on. Hey, hey, don't worry, son. Keep your hands up. We're the police. We're the good guys. I want to see that damn warrant. Where's your? Where's your? <laughs> where's your? Where's your backup? Where's your backup? Right. You, where's you your backup? Rookie. But what did she say to him? There you go. There's a the lie. You yeah. a rookie. Yeah. You a rookie, Nick Casario. <laughs> you acting like a That's rookie. That's what I tell Nick Casario. You yeah. a rookie. You a rookie. <laughs> Good thing about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As you said, I like how you first that. time I around. Like that. I like that. You coming in. Thank you. You coming in. You got a huge contract. Good situation. You get to reset the franchise. Now I know you're not begging. Uh, to get rid of a franchise quarterback may be part of the reason part of the reason took the job in the first place. You got a quarterback most difficult position to fill in football, maybe all of sports. But it's clear the guy didn't want to be there. You had half the league lined up to take him before we knew anything about these lawsuits. All you had to do was make the deal. You don't make the deal lost opportunity. It seems like oh, nobody's going to touch Deshaun Watson now, but look at this. Oh, look at this. Somebody actually does want to, to, to trade for Deshaun Watson. As a matter of fact, you got a little bit of a market. And you're about to screw it up again. <laughs> you're about to screw this up again. Look, you may have a market, but you don't have exceptional leverage. So if you could have gotten three first and two seconds before, I'm just going to tell you, you can't get it right now. So you take the best deal that you can get. If the best deal that you can get is in the AFC, and if it, if it helps the Houston Texans long term, but doesn't help the Houston Texans in the 2021 season, you got to take it. I I'm telling you, they are going to, they're going to screw this up royally. Like there's time, there's time to recover, but I don't think they're going to recover. They're so in their feelings over how the Dolphins were eager to get Deshaun Watson. They're so in their feelings over AFC versus NFC. And I agree with you. I think it's, a little bit of the Texans DNA where they feel like, hey, we run it. We run this and the players listen. But it's also, let me play a little dirty pool here. I think it's also in Nick Casario's DNA. He spent uh, a generation mm -hmm. with the New England Patriots. Now, I told you the Patriots lie. They lie, right? They're also stubborn. Mm -hmm. They're just stubborn. And so I think Nick Casario took the best from the Patriots and he also took the worst from the Patriots, the stubborn part. Just come on, man. You gotta have some flexibility. You gotta understand when you're losing, well, that's you're losing this, salvage it and move on. But it's the hand he was dealt. But he's not gonna do it. It's the hand he was dealt. The player has a no trade clause. So even before the sexual assault allegations, a no trade clause handcuffs your ability to move him where you want to move him. Okay. So that was always going to be problematic. If he doesn't want to play, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to have a healthy play. You got 52 players. You got to put him on IR. Like they don't have as many options as they think. And especially if Deshaun is saying, I'm only waving my no trade clause to Miami. That's it. So for me, it's like it's being in business, Michael, and I'm sure you've ever heard this before. There's a saying that 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. And if the yes. player is not going to play for you, this notion that, oh, Casario doesn't want to do a bad deal. He doesn't want, uh, you know, Belichick uh, to look at it and say it's a bad deal. Hey, man, I ain't got time to be worried about what everybody else thinks. Here's the situation. I got a team to move forward with. I got a roster to construct. I got a new head coach. It's my first rodeo. I ain't got time to be sitting around hey. with this albatross known Ooh. as Deshaun Watson who may be in some serious trouble again Houston. Let him be somebody else's problem. Hey, like hey, you Mike. should be rushing. Oh, you want? Oh, you want him? You? Oh, if, if, if Brian Flores or Chris Greer or Stephen Ross called him up and be like, hey, uh, what's up with Deshaun? Oh, oh, you still want him word? Oh, <clears throat> say, say less. Hey, Deshaun, right. pack your bags. You, we got something for this situation as opposed 
to try to play hardball. You talk about inmates running the prison. Hell, the prison might as well be the warden. In, uh, excuse me, the inmate might as well be the warden in this case because of the no trade clause that the previous regime gave him, that ownership gave him. Right. You stuck right. like Chuck, and you don't have right. to be. This is all real. The Dolphins have never not been interested in Deshaun Watson. That's why Brian Flores shows his words very carefully. I'm interested in the players that are on this roster. He knew what he was saying. He knew what he what he couldn't say. Otherwise, he'd have been lying. The Dolphins are the, the Dolphins have been in, interested in this. Okay. The three I ones and two staff. twos I want our is the going rate for a quarterback who does not have this kind of baggage. And again, to assume that this deal or better will be there in March after this season, who could have seen what was coming when it came down the pipe, when it came to the allegations? Who could have seen that coming? You don't know what's coming between now and March. This ain't a pro Deshaun take. This is a pro logic take. Like I'm just, I'm just for people doing the right thing. And the right thing by the Texans well, is to move on from this thing. Well, two two things, uh, two quick things. One, uh, I want our staff to find that to, to hold on to that footage of Brian Flores for after the Deshaun Deshaun Watson acquisition. Just so we know, I want it on the record. We want to know what Brian Flores looks like when he's not telling the truth. I just want I want to see if we find. I want to study it. I want to see if there are any ticks. If his eyebrow moves up anything, he did a very convincing job, but I think under scrutiny we can see. Oh, look, look what his face did there. And the other thing, just so I want to say this, uh, and this is pretty much a tease for who we're going to talk to uh, coming up here in a couple of minutes. You can't live your life hoping that Bill Belichick is going to give you the tap on the head because I know a guy and you know a guy <laughs> who went to Bill, Be yeah. who went to Bill Belichick and said, should I make this deal? There's this guy at Alabama, his name is Julio Jones, and I'm willing to trade up from 27 to 6 to get him, a wide receiver. Now, I know you, you don't think that's, uh, that's good value, but what, what, what do you think? Belichick said, don't do it. Don't go up and trade for Julio Jones. Why don't you draft a guy like Jonathan Baldwin? Who? Yeah, Jonathan Baldwin. Fortunately for Thomas Dimitrov, he did his own thing. You got to do your own thing. And, and so there's a balance, and this is not just football. As you said, it's a, it's a, a logic lesson, just life. In, in, in the NFL and any other business, there's a healthy balance of listening to your mentors, seeking counsel, seeking wise counsel, but then also having the courage of your, of your convictions and doing what you think is right for your situation. It may not be right for your mentor situation, but it's right for you. Right. And Bill Belichick it has may not never... Be right has never had a had a situation like the Texans have right now. So yeah, I think That's he exactly should right. uh, I think and, and, and should it may not be the, the perfect trade in a vacuum when you see Deshaun Watson. Yeah, three ones is what you think you should be able to get for when he's playing a top five or top three even quarterback. Okay, but under the circumstances, you got to make the best of the situation. Speaking of wise counsel and mentor and whatnot. I don't mean to put you on the spot. But I can't help it because that's what we do. And we got other stuff to talk about during the break. Why you be wearing your microphone outside your jacket? That jacket too nice for you to have that wire just like hanging. Put that inside your jacket with the wire. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Now put that clip on the lapel in, or, or on the shirt, I guess, if you want. Either way. Okay. There yeah. we go. But that's going to pull the shirt a little bit. That's going to pull the shirt ever so slightly. I think you should pull it on, put it on the lapel. Oh, no, no. See, now I make your shirt brush though. Okay. All right. Put it on the lapel. All right. All right. Pull it out okay, and pu right. put it. Keep it. Keep it outside the shirt, but put it up the jacket okay. and on the lapel. Ain't got. You know, I don't okay. need to sell right. that wire. Right. You know okay. what I'm saying? Right. Let, okay. let me help you out right quick. If I was there, I would fix it for right. you. You. You would. Go. Oh, thank you. I appreciate there that. There we go. I, I mean, that jacket costs. A, it probably costs a grip. Bam. Now we cooking with. We ain't okay, talking so about you that. Gotta, okay, we got to find something that keeps it inside, or maybe got to flip the wire. There we go. I'll help you out. All right, there we go. How about that? Oh, my, sit, How about come that? on now. Oni, you're welcome. Look at me. I mean, see, or you can just be like me and do a teach. You can do this and just, you know, but I mean, you put you put too much thought. You, you got your pocket square popping. It's too much there. See, there you go. Much better. Right. Much better. Thank you, man. We're going to talk you know, to you. You know what? I listened. Dimitrov. And I listened, didn't you I? You did. See, I listened. You did. You so, did. Now, if you had said you something said, said, that wasn't. That wasn't best for my situation. I'd be like, well, you know, I appreciate that, but no, I'm going to go there in a go. different direction. But I listen. There you go. 
You look good. You look you look good. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you. We're going to talk to Thomas Dimitrov in a minute. Uh, get a GM's perspective on this uh, this game of chicken or Mexican standoff, whatever you want to call it, that the Dolphins and Texans seem to be playing around to Sean Watson. That and a lot more going on in the NFL.